Welcome to Crafty Chemist Designs. I'm Maggie Workman, the Crafty Chemist. I'm here today to show you how to make this fun beach party scrapbook layout. Let me show you how. I had to record this ahead of time instead of going live because I will be traveling and I will literally be in the air during my normal live time. So I hope that you find this video tutorial useful. Okay, let's get started. This is the layout that we will be making, and I'm going to keep it um, to the left for you to see. The Beach Party collection is found in the Close to My Heart July, August, September catalog 2022. Look at that collection. Isn't it beautiful? I love all of the colors in there. Let's take a look at the papers and the sticker sheet. They are so fun. They've got a beach and a pool theme, sun, fun, vacation. You will need this for all of your vacation photos. Look at the sticker sheet. I love the little mini bus. And you can see that some of the stickers are UV coated that make them a little bit shiny. The papers are super fun and again have that beach pool theme. You get six sheets, two each of three double-sided designs and there they all are. This first one has a sort of surfing theme with the water. This is a bunch of beach blankets and umbrellas. I love this green background with the beach balls. This one is a very neutral one that has just um, stripes. And this is a nice one with uh, waves. And this is sort of a hatched, um, almost gingham looking. Really nice. Okay, you can also get the coordinating cardstock, and that is one great thing that Close to My Heart has, is they always coordinate um, the papers so that everything matches. You've got French Vanilla, Sundance, Clover, Capri, Bluebird, and Candy Apple. The elements to this set are these rubber shapes, and they're so different. They're not puffy stickers, they're rubber, so they're um, solid. We also have the digital art collection with some really fun designs, including a couple cards, and then the pocket um, squares. This is the um, card making stamp set, and this is the scrapbooking stamp set. What I love about that scrapbooking stamp set are all of the titles. You can also get the scrapbooking workshop kit where you get all of the supplies needed to make those three two page layouts. You get the papers, die cuts, and even the embellishments to go with it. And then lastly, we have the card making workshop. And this one is just too good. Look at that little VW bus and the coconut drink and the flamingo and the popsicle. You get all of the materials needed to make 16 cards for each of those four designs. So this is a layout that we're going to make. I made it sort of a pool theme so I could um, scrapbook my granddaughter's first swim lessons. And I did make a two-page layout, but basically the right side layout is just a mirror image of the left side layout. But you can see, again, it's that sun, fun, summertime theme. So um, let's, let's try and get started here. Get our supplies out. I'm going to start with the Sundance background paper. I love Sundance. I wasn't quite sure when it first came out, but I use it all of the time now. And next, let's cut the blue waves paper. So regardless of what paper you're using to make this um, layout, make sure that when you cut these that you have them in the right orientation. It doesn't really matter with uh, these blue squares that I'm cutting, even though it has a direction, uh, the waves go a certain way, um, because I'm just making five by five squares, so you, you can't cut it wrong. But the beach blanket ones, you really are going to need to uh, make sure you cut it in the right direction. So as I said, I'm making um, a five inch by five inch square, and you're going to need two of them for the one page layout for the left side. Okay, there we go. Let's put this aside and get the next one. I'm 
I'm going to bring out the beach blanket and uh, umbrella paper. And so this one does have a direction, I think it goes up and down. Although I guess you could put them side to side because it doesn't matter how you lay your blanket. But to me, it looks like it's going up and down. So I'm cutting that at five and three fourths. That's the height. And now the width is going to be four inches. So I'm gonna cut that and you need one more piece. I'm gonna cut it at four inches. But this piece, needs to be a little bit smaller, so I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter. So cut off half inch. So these two are actually different sizes. The one on the left is four by five and three fourths. The one on the right is four by five and a quarter. So we got that paper cut. Now let's go to the photo mats. So you either need two four by four photos and four two by two photos, or uh, the placeholders, okay? So two four by four placeholders and four two by two placeholders, or the actual pictures. I'm going to cut the mats for these now. And I'm using white. I wanted a white border around my photos since it was such that vibrant blue, I wanted it to stand out. But you can use whatever color you want for the mats. I might recommend a candy apple if you actually wanted a color. Okay, I'm cutting these four and a quarter. So you need two pieces that are four and a quarter. So those are just slightly bigger than the photos or the photo mats. It's hard to see here because it's white on white, but you get the idea. If I had actual pictures, you really would be able to see that little white border. Now let's cut the mats for the two by two pictures. I'm cutting these at two and a quarter by two and a quarter. You will need three of these. Let's cut another strip at two and a quarter. And cut three more. There's one. Here is two. And then the, third, the last one, three. So we have four total, two and a quarter by two and a quarter mats. I did white, but again, you can do another color. I want to show you that um, the mats will show a little bit of the white border around your pictures. Okay. Let's get these out of the way. And we have one last piece to cut. This is, there's a little decorative piece and we're going to cut this at one and a half. And if your paper does have a direction, um, it's sort of a landscape piece at one and a half by four and a half. Um, so it's gonna go lengthwise. So cut your paper accordingly so that um, the short side is going up and down in case you, your paper has direction. And I'll show you where that goes. I'm, you might not have noticed it on the layout. Okay, here we go. Start with the base page of the Sundance. You could use a different color, like um, I think the candy apple might be nice. But the Sundance, I think, helps the blues uh, stand out. I'm getting these centered in your view there. So you can see everything that I'm doing. Okay, bring out all of our pieces that we just cut. Set those aside beside us. I'm going to start with the blue paper. And this is about a one inch from the right edge and about half an inch from the top. That's where we're going to place it. Again, make sure you're, you're putting it with the correct direction up, even though it's five by five, so you can twist it anyway. Um, when you put it down, make sure that it is right side up. Okay, so again, I'm going to make sure that the waves are going how I want them. 
and I'm going to just put them one inch from the right and a half inch down. I'm using the lines on my Versa mat to mark that. Oh, and you see, I, I don't like where I put it. It's a little bit too far to the right. And luckily, that adhesive didn't um, stick too fast. So you have a little bit of time there to um, remove it, but then it does become kind of permanent. Okay, I'm much happier there. You can see it should line up with the six inch mark right in the center. Now let's do the uh, blue piece here. And that again is about one inch up and then about uh, one inch over. Make sure my waves are going the right way. Putting the adhesive down. Just going around the edges. But then I realized that this um, umbrella and beach blanket paper actually goes underneath the blue. So before I put the, um, the blue one down, I'm going to put this down. And you want the bigger piece of the two uh, papers, the one that's five and three fourths tall because you want it to extend down a little bit so you can you can see it okay so this one is about two and a half inches from the right side and about half inch or so up but what we're going to do is we are going to place it two and a half inches from the right Let's look at the Versa mat and kind of eyeball it. You can use your T-square um, to perfectly line it up. And then I'm going to just butt it up against the blue paper. So it should be about a half inch from the bottom. Okay, now you can put the uh, blue wave paper on top. And you can see I'm placing it so that um, it goes right down that six inch center. And that, let's place the second piece of the beach blanket and umbrella paper. Remember, this is the one that was four inches wide by five and a quarter inch tall. And what I'm going to do is place it down a little bit from the top line of the blue paper up there and overlap the blue paper below, but butt it right up against that six inch center mark. Okay, now let's get the white mats for our pictures. And I'm just going to kind of line them up to make sure that I have them where I want them before I glue them down. Because they are a little bit askew, so you want to make sure you have them placed right. And you also want to cover up that center part where the four pieces meet and overlap. So I have the three here. That third one is going to get popped up. And the fourth one is um, basically a perpendicular, right? It's a nice straight page. Before I put the papers down, I want to put my title down because I wasn't 100% sure um, if that would fit how I had them. So I wanted to make sure that I got that title on there. And then I can arrange the mats, you know, to go around that. I'm going to use the beach day title. And what I love about the sticker sheet is it has several really nice titles. Okay, you can stick that down and it goes so nice. Oh, I noticed there's a little piece that I need to pop out there between the B and the E. So look at that, it does extend over um, to the Sundance a little bit, but I think that looks really good. Okay, so now I know there's enough room for the title um, let's not forget to put down that little yellow hatched mark decorative piece before we put the mats down. And what this is going to do is you want to place it about a quarter inch above, up from the bottom, and then, you know, kind of butt it up against the, um, the, border there or you can see I put it pretty close to the border. You just want it to be about a quarter inch around. Okay, there we go. I like that arrangement. I'm going to start with the four and a quarter by four and a quarter mat. 
because the other ones sort of go on top of that. So I, I do angle this a little bit. I want a little bit of the beach blanket paper to show um, and kind of tilt it towards the left a little bit. I kind of, the corner, the top left corner is around 10 and a half. On this one, I did have it up a little bit higher than in my sample, so you can see the beach blanket paper on the bottom of it. If you don't, if you like it better on the left, you can put that piece down a little bit more. Now I'm going to adhere this top one, but you want to make sure that you don't put adhesive on that left side where it's going to overlap the mat because you don't want it to stick down since I don't have the pictures on there yet. If you already are using your pictures and placing your pictures, you know, put the picture on and then you can put that down right on top and then you can, you know, put adhesive all the way around. Again, on this piece, I'm going to leave that left side open so I can have room to stick my picture on that four by four mat. This one, I, I'm tilting a little bit to the right, not too much, but a little bit. Now I'm gonna leave the third one go because I'm going to pop that on top. You can put adhesive all around the fourth piece because it is kind of on the bottom and I'm sticking it directly to the mat. I wanna make sure that I don't leave any openings there. So put it, there we go. Now this one, this mat, I'm going to pop up on pop dots. And what I'm using is the center parts from the shaker window foam. So, you know, I used the oval around the edge for my um, oval shaker windows. And then everything on the inside is extra bonus um, foam squares. That's what I love about these um, shaker foam and acetate packs is it's like not only getting the shaker oval frame, but then you, you get a whole set of um, foam tape right in the center. So I did put nine little, they are kind of small. Um, I don't like my things that are popped up to have any kind of sagging parts. So I do kind of make sure that I have foam tape evenly all around taking the backing off of this and luckily the backing seemed to be coming off pretty well if you have foam tape you can use that instead um, and it you have less backings to take off but um, again I like to use up those squares I'm going to pop this up and I'm going to make sure that I overlap it so that the foam squares aren't covering up where I'm going to put the pictures. Okay, and we probably should have done this one before we did those four two by two pictures, but or two by two mats. Um, I didn't, so I'm going to have to slide this underneath the mats, which is okay because I didn't put them right up against. I didn't put adhesive right up against the edge of those squares, so there is a little bit of wiggle room. And what you want to do is you want to place it where it's overlapping that yellow decorative piece a little bit. And it is close enough to the center to appear underneath those 4 by 4 mats. Because you want that to all be sort of continuous. Okay, now you can put on your papers or as I'm doing here, put on my photo placeholders. I am going to print off, I think I'm going to print off pictures when the baby went to the beach since um this says beach day but they didn't actually take her to the beach but they did take her to florida so i'll, I'll put I'll put those pictures here but for right now i'm going to put the photo placeholders I've been traveling this summer and I'm getting a little bit behind on the baby's book. So I'm going to have to get on that. And I'm traveling again this week. So when I come back, though, I'm going to really dig in and get caught up. Because I want to give her the book for her first birthday. Okay, there we go. I've got the photo placeholders on there. And you can see it's going to have a nice white border around all of the pictures. If you use like the candy apple or whatever, you are you know, you'll be able to see that. I know it looks like a lot of white right now, but once you have the pictures, it won't be like that. 
Okay, now I'm going to put on the journal strips. And these are about four inches wide and a half inch thick. Um, and I'm going to put three there. Some people like to put quarter inch um, journal squares. You can do that. If you do a quarter inch, you probably could fit like uh, four of them there. Or you can just put a journal box there. Just make a square, a white square, if you prefer to have journal boxes. I've kind of started using this, um, these journal strips um, that Close to My Heart does. I never did that before I started uh, as a consultant with Close to My Heart, but now I really love it because you can journal, but I don't have to write a whole bunch, right? You can just have a nice little title or a few things about the page, which I love. I mean, I, I'm not the best at journaling. I like my pictures to do the talking, but this actually gets me to journal a little bit, which I, I really never did before. I very rarely had writing on my page because I'm like everybody else who doesn't really like your own you know, handwriting. Okay, so let's find some stickers to go um, to decorate there. I'm looking for a title. Um, let's use this one. I like the colors there. Um, and... Even though on the sample on the left, I've had that little oval title. I'm going to use this little small strip here. I don't think there really was any other little ones that I could have used on that sheet. I'm trying to use up the stickers on the sheet. And you'll see, I've been able to use, so far, um, this is my second two-page layout using this uh, pack. And I did cut supplies that potentially I could go live depending on how my plane lands and when we get back to the hotel. So really I'm going to get three two-page layouts out of that one sticker sheet with stickers left over. Okay I'm putting this um, title down and I'm making sure that I don't overlap where I'm going to be putting the photo. Okay, what do we want to put? Okay, I'm going to use that beach party sentiment because I think it goes really well with my theme. And then I'll use the sand pail and shovel. I'm trying to make this one a beach theme. Okay, put the little banner there. And that one's going straight down. And I'm going to pop up the pail and shovel. I like to have sort of those two dimensions there with the cluster. This pail is a little bit small, but what I really like about this oval, these oval foam shapes, is that there are some different sized foam squares. Like you can have a little corner one, one that's, you know, like angled on one side. Um, to fit into those nooks and crannies. Because again, I don't like to have any part of my things that I'm popping up um, to not have foam tape under it. So it doesn't sag. Okay, let's put the pail there. Oh, look how cute that looks. Okay, um, now we need something up there. What do we have? Oh, and there is another um, pair of sunglasses there. So let's just go ahead and use that one. You can stick it straight down on the paper if you want to. But I have two elements that are already popped up. You know, the pail and then that sentiment below the bottom right photo. So I think I'm going to um, pop this one up. Okay, and there's that little piece I was telling you about where you can get them into that small nooks and crannies. So the little arms on the sunglasses is a really tiny spot. So I put one of those little corner pieces down there to hold that up. Otherwise, that little piece would kind of flop down, which I don't like. Let's see if I can find another really small one. And there is one right there. And I think I can get it onto the arm. Okay, there we go. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm putting one more up there. Look, at, I tell you, I'm very compulsive about, <laughs> about this. Oh, I'm, I know I'm obsessive compulsive, but what can I say? 
I've got the foam squares, might as well use them. Taking the backings off. I'm so thankful that these backings come off so easy. And they're not sticking to my hands very much today. But the really little pieces are a little bit difficult to get the backings off. Okay, there we go. I got them. Now let's put that up there. Okay, you can see I have my little three popped up things kind of in a triangle to draw your eye all the way around. And there we have our layout. And then I remembered, oh, I have the um, embellishments, the rubber pieces. I did not have these when I made my sample because um, they were not in from close to my heart yet to order. Um, so I don't have them on my sample, but now that I have them, I'm going to just add them here and there, sprinkle them on. It adds another dimension and another texture to the page. Okay, I think I have enough time that I'm going to make the right-hand side page. And again, this is just a mirror image of what we already did. But I do need to cut the pieces because I only cut for the first page. Okay, so if you remember, this piece was five by five. And I'm using the blue wave paper. I think this paper really gives it that fun beach or pool look. And I think it goes perfectly with those pictures that I put on the sample because the water in that pool was so nice and blue. It just goes great. Okay, now let's look at the beach blanket and umbrella paper. I'm cutting this at five and three fourths inch tall. And again, this is one where the direction of the paper does matter because it's not, you know, an even square. It's a rectangle. So you want your paper, the direction to be going this, the tall way, the five and three fourths. And now the width is four inches. Okay, and then I'm going to cut my second one at four inches. But this piece does not have to be as tall. It needs to be five and a quarter. Okay, we've got those two pieces cut. Now let's cut the little um, decorative piece. It's four and a half wide and then one and a half tall. Okay, now we need to get the white daisy paper for the photo mats or whatever color you're using for the photo mats. And I'm cutting these at four and a quarter for my four by four pictures. So uh, four and a quarter wide, four and a quarter tall, and you need two of those. Those are the mats for my four by four pictures. Um, and now we need to cut our mats for the two by two picture. So I'm cutting these at two and a quarter by two and a quarter. And we're going to need four of these. So I've cut one. Let's cut another strip that's two and a, two and a quarter. So this is square two square three and square four okay Darcy's beside me so if you hear funny noises it's Darcy <laughs> he just jumped up beside me okay so I needed four pieces that were two and a quarter by two and a quarter okay I think we're ready to assemble Let's put our sample to the left. I do need to stand on top of my chair to get the, the first time that's centered because I have the camera just slightly above my eye level. So I wanna make sure that I have it nice and centered on the screen for you. 
so you can see everything I'm doing. Okay, again, start with the Sundance base page. Take your two blue waves squares that are five by five. And again, remember, this is reversed from the left-hand side. So I'm going to put this one about one inch from the left side of the paper and about half inch down. I've got a little bit of adhesive on the paper because I'm putting the adhesive on while it's on top of the layout, which I normally wouldn't do, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. And remember, it's going to line up with the six inch mark in the center. And then we need the beach blanket and beach ball paper. Um, you want the taller, the taller piece. And it's going to butt right up against the blue paper that's at the top, but you want to make it about two and a half inches away from the left side. So you want it to extend a little bit beyond that six inch center mark because you want the other blue square to overlap it a little bit. So I'm going to, at the top, I'm going to butt it up against the blue waves paper, but you see how it extends over the right side about half an inch. Okay, now we can put the blue waves paper down. And I'm going to line it up, make sure that the waves are going in the right direction. Line it up basically with that six inch center mark, okay? You see how it's right along the six inch center? Okay, now you can put the other beach blanket and umbrella paper up in the upper right corner. And you want it to go about half inch down from the top of that where the blue paper is. So it's about one inch down from the top of the page. And it should overlap the blue paper a little bit. Okay, let's line up our photo mats, the four by fours. Kind of place them where I want them to go. But don't forget to put down this little decorative strip. For some reason, I forget this, but luckily I remember before it's too late. Okay, put it a little bit, about a quarter inch up from the bottom, and I'm just going to butt it right up against that edge, the right edge there. Okay, and that four and a quarter by four and a quarter mat is going to overlap the yellow piece a little bit, and I want it to extend a little bit past the six inch center. Now let's kind of arrange the two and a quarter by two and a quarter mats so that it covers up all of the overlapping pieces. Okay, let's stick these down. And get adhesive on all four sides. So again, when I place it, I want it to overlap that yellow hatched paper a little bit, maybe about a quarter of an inch, and I want it to, here I have it kind of right up against that six inch, but you want to make sure that wherever you place it, those two and a quarter by two and a quarter pieces are going to cover, cover it up, because you want them all to be um, sort of one unit. You don't want any space between any of them. Okay. That was Darcy leaving, if you heard the door. Okay, place this. I'm going to place it at about the, kind of the nine and a half inch mark. And I'm tilting it a little bit to the right. Okay, I'm going to put adhesive on this paper, but make sure you don't put the adhesive on the very right side until you have your picture down. After I put pictures down, I'll go back and maybe add some photo squares to that. Because you want to have space to um, place your pictures. Okay, again, every time I'm, I'm adjusting to make sure I have room. Now, 
this one's a little bit hard to put the adhesive on because I don't want it to overlap either of the four and a quarter by four and a quarter squares or that top square. So what I'm going to do is just put some adhesive right down the middle where it's going to hit the, the base pages and not the mats. I'm going to leave the room open so again I can put other pictures, the pictures down. I'm going to skip putting the third square down because um, I'm going to pop that up. And again, um, on the fourth piece, I'm leaving the left side open until I get the picture there on that four and a quarter by four and a quarter mat. Okay, and I like the placement. This third one I am popping up. I am putting, I'll probably put nine little squares on here, but these these um, squares are really tiny. You can kind of tell that because that square that I'm putting it on is a two and a quarter by two and a quarter square. So just to give you an idea about how small those pieces are. But um, I'm not going to take off all of the backing I'm only going to take off those two there just to secure it down to the page because I don't want it to overlap where I'm going to place the pictures. So that should hold it down. And then later, after I get the pictures on the page, I'll go back and remove um, the backing. I will put the photo placeholders on so you can either put your pictures on right now if you have those ready. Um, I don't, so I'm just going to place the placeholders okay so I got the two four by four pictures and you can see that there's a nice small white border around the pictures or there will be a, a nice white border around the pictures I love the I love this. I love this layout. It's just so fun and different. And it's so different for me because you know me, I'm a chemist. Um, I need everything orderly. And this one with the pieces all askew, I, you know, I really am loving it. Let's um, add the decorations now. I need, we need something for the right corner there. Remember this one, I'm doing a beach theme. I was thinking about doing the VW bus and the surfboard, but then I, I thought better of it. I thought that the palm trees and the little beach went better with the theme. So I'm going to use that. And it fits in that space perfectly. I need one little decorative touch. What should I use? I thought about the sunblock, but then I thought, oh, that sunblock looks huge compared to those palm trees. Um, so then I thought, let's put this shell down. And I really kind of had trouble placing it. I didn't like anywhere where I put it. Um, so I, I messed around a little bit. Wasn't sure I was going to use it, but in the end, I liked it like that. There we go. Okay, let's put a little, kind of a sentiment, a little title banner. Oh, and I found one there, this little green oval will be perfect. I'm only going to put a couple little foam squares here because it's a really small piece. Take the backing off. And when you place it, you want to make sure you don't go over um, your photo uh, placeholders. Now, if you already have your photos on there, you can place it wherever you want. Um, but if you have the photo mat, make sure that you're not putting the adhesive on there. And then we'll add the three journaling strips. I will tell you that there's a big surprise in the new core catalog regarding these journaling strips, and I'm just so excited about it. I can't wait to share it with you. Next week, actually, we'll be going over the core catalog. 
So there's so much good in there. So I've got the three strips down to add just a little few comments about the pictures. Okay, what can we put in that decorative spot? Let's go back to the sticker sheet. I'm going to use, oh, no, I don't want to use that one because it would be Sundance on Sundance. So let's use the green. I'm going to use the green and then the little sun sand castle. I place it a little bit to the left and then put the sand castle there. I am going to pop it up. Trying to get little pieces in the little nooks and crannies. Let's see, one more, no, one little piece. There's a really tiny piece that I can put in there for the flag. I don't want the flag to droop, so I'm going to find the tiniest piece I can. And there you go, it fits perfectly on that. Now, the trick is getting the backing off. So let's take the backings off of all of these pieces. Only a couple more. I do like to have these popped up elements. And again, you can see I have three popped up elements on this page, which is visually nice for the eye. And I think there's one more decoration um, for the watermelon. There's another watermelon, so let's just go ahead and use that one. And um, again, I'm going to pop that up. I could have popped up the um, little shell by the palm trees, but I didn't, which is okay because these three being popped up is, is visually better. That watermelon is very sticky to my fingers. I'm putting the little angled pieces in the corner. Okay. Let's take the backing off. Those little ones are just hard to get. There we go. Okay, place it there in the corner. And there is the second, the right hand page done. Let's put it up against the left-hand page, and look how cute that is together. This one is the nice beach theme with a the beach day, the palm trees, the sand castle, the bucket and shovel. Okay, let's sprinkle on a couple of these beach day rubber shapes. This is going to add another dimension to the page. I just add three of those. There we go. Kind of takes away from the little blank spaces there. It gives a little bit of visual interest. So if you like any of these products I talked about today, you can go to the crafty chemist to my heart.com. Follow me on Facebook where I go live every Sunday at 4 p.m. Um, at Crafty Chemist Designs. I invite you to join my Facebook VIP group, The Crafty Chemist Presents CTMH, and check me out on Instagram, Crafty Chemist Designs. Next week, I will be doing the core catalog reveal, so tune in. It is so good. <music>